Strap yourselves in, everybody, because it's treasure hunt time. We're going to take you all around the world on a journey where you'll see and hear about some of the richest, rarest, and outright most incredible ancient treasures and artifacts that have ever been discovered. It's a collection of forgotten wonders from far-flung places, and your journey begins right now. We begin with the Marti Navika treasure, which was discovered in the Ukrainian village of Marti Navika, Cherkasy Oblast in 1909. The treasure consists of 116 solid silver items, all of which were manufactured somewhere between the 6th and 7th centuries. Nobody knows for sure who created these fabulous items. The most popular hypothesis among historians is that it's the work of the Penkova culture of Antis. But without any direct archaeological evidence, there's no way to prove the theory. The most notable items in the hoard are four anthropomorphic depictions of dancing humans. But there are also five animal figurines along with a trio of fibulas, a brooch, six silver armlets, some fine tiaras, earrings, neck rings, and horse harnesses. Experts in ancient art believe that the style of the pieces suggests that their creators were influenced by the Huns or the Bulgars. If the Martinovica treasure really was the work of the Penkovo culture, the sophistication of the pieces suggests that the Penkovo were more refined and educated than the nomadic tribespeople we tend to think of them as. While most of the treasure hoard is still in Ukraine, some of it is now in the British Museum in London. Our next treasure collection is the Cordoba treasure, so named because it was found on the outskirts of Cordoba, Spain in 1915. It's known as the Tesoro de Cordoba in its native tongue and is best described as an outstanding collection of Iron Age silver. At the time of its discovery, archaeologists believed that the treasure had been buried by its owners for safekeeping, but for whatever reason, they never came back for it. That burial took place somewhere close to the year 100 BCE. The Cordoba region of Spain was part of the Roman Empire by then, but the style of these pieces of silver jewelry confirms that there was still a strong Celtic cultural influence in the area. That's best seen in the typically Celtic large circular torque with its double cones and the zoomorphic relief decorations on the eight armlets in the collection. All of the artifacts in the collection have been identified save for a pair of silver lumps, which were either incomplete at the time of their burial or have been badly damaged since. The entire Cordoba treasure was sold to an American art collector in the 1920s, who subsequently sold it to the British Museum in 1932. Every archaeologist and treasure hunter dreams of making a discovery that could be worth millions of dollars. One such discovery may have happened in New South Wales, Australia in early 2022. There, during an inventory check in a warehouse, experts found a 400-year-old painting called Still Life that might be the work of the 17th century Dutch artist Willem Klaas Hita, who's recognized as being among the greatest artists of the Dutch Golden Age. However, there's a possibility that it could be the work of his son, Garrett Williams Hita. The two painters have very similar signatures and styles, which makes it difficult for modern-day experts to tell them apart. To confuse matters further, it's thought that the father and son sometimes worked on paintings together. Until 1945, almost half of Garrett Williams Hita's paintings were incorrectly attributed to his father for those reasons. If it can be proven that this beautiful painting is the work of the father rather than the son, it's likely to be worth more than $3 million at auction. It'll still be worth several hundred thousand, even if it turns out to be the work of the sun. In early 2014, Scottish metal detectorist Derek McLennan was nearly killed in a car crash after a truck rammed into his car at 60 miles per hour. A few months after recovering from his injuries, he went back out into the fields with his instrument and came across the most valuable Viking treasure discovered in British history. The collection of 10th century Viking jewelry, pottery, and coins that Derek came across in Dumfries and Galloway is now known as the Galloway Hoard and includes priceless early Christian crosses, among other solid gold artifacts. 
There are more than a hundred pieces in the hoard, all of which are now on display in a museum. British law requires any archaeologist or treasure hunter who makes a gold or silver discovery to report it to authorities. Failing to do so is a criminal offense. The law means Derek was never able to sell his precious finds on the open market, but the coroner assessed the value of the Galloway hoard and decided that he should be paid two million pounds as a finder's fee. The money hopefully cheered Derek up after his near miss in the car. In 1622, a Spanish galleon called the Santa Margarita sank off the coast of Key West in Florida, USA. The galleon is known to have been heavily laden with treasure when it went down, so treasure hunters have been searching for its lost riches ever since. One of the most valuable artifacts ever to have been recovered from the hoard is this stunning gold chalice. Even after so many years underwater, the etched scroll work on the upper surfaces of the chalice is still visible. It might only be five inches tall and barely wide enough to fit a softball inside it, but a professional auction house has given it a value of one million dollars. Even though this chalice is almost certainly from the wreck, probably belonging to one of the galleon's many rich passengers, the wreck itself is still yet to be found. It's still out there somewhere on the seabed, and when it's eventually discovered, it's likely to contain golden goods even more valuable than this. It's no wonder that people are still so keen to find it. We're back to the treasure hoards again now. This time it's the Kabul Hoard, so named because it was found close to Kabul in Afghanistan in 1933. The collection is also known as the Shaman Hazori. The entire treasure collection is made up of exceptionally valuable ancient coins drawn from several places. Some of them are Achaemenid coins, others are Greek, and some come from further afield. Most of the coinage was minted between 2400 and 2500 years ago, with just over 1,000 coins in the collection in total. The most recent datable coin in the Kabul hoard was minted in the year 380 BCE, which suggests that this may have been the year the collection was buried. This is the first solid evidence that punch-marked coins existed that long ago, and supports the idea that punch marking was introduced to India by the Achaemenid Empire rather than being an Indian invention. That's something of a blow to historians in India, as they've always believed that their culture was the first to develop coinage in the Gangetic Plains. Many Indian historians still make that claim, despite the existence of this evidence to the contrary. The treasure hordes just keep coming in this video. And our next one is the Agina treasure. This is one of the most important ancient Minoan gold hoards ever to have been discovered, and was once thought to have been found on the island of Agina in the 19th century. The circumstances of its discovery are rather mysterious, but at the time the find was reported, it was said to have taken place inside an unspecified tomb. Most scholars now think it more likely came from the Chrysolakos necropolis of Malia Crete. Wherever it came from, the treasure collection comprises gold jewelry of a kind that was popular during the Green Bronze Age of 3,800 years ago. Included in the hoard are two sets of earrings, a chest pendant, three diadems, a gold cup, several ornamental plaques, and a few hoops and rings. The most outstanding individual piece in the collection is known as the Master of Animals Pendant. Like so many of the treasure collections in this video, the entire Agina treasure is now rightly or wrongly in the hands of the British Museum, which bought it in 1892. Finding a large coin hoard is generally better than finding a single coin. But then again, that depends on the coin. In August 2010, archaeologists in Israel discovered the heaviest and most valuable gold coin in the history of the country. It's also one of the oldest. The coin weighs 28 grams, is made of solid gold, and is approximately 2,200 years old. A team from the Israeli Antiquities Authority found it at an archaeological site called Tal Kadesh, close to the country's border with Lebanon. Coins from this era have been discovered many times before, but this one is six times heavier than the average coin from that era. 
It dates back to a time when this part of the world was ruled by the Seleucid Empire, which was based in what's now Iraq. However, the Seleucid Empire didn't mint this coin. Instead, it's the work of the Egyptian Ptolemies. Historians have never been able to identify the individual whose face appears on the coin, but it might be Cleopatra I, wife of Ptolemy V. There's almost nothing to compare it to, as this is only the second gold Ptolemaic coin ever to be found in Israel, and the first weighed just two grams. Modern China is a powerhouse of global production. That's why the label Made in China appears in so many places. From the clothes you wear to the objects you have in your home, it even appears on some of the contents of this 800-year-old shipwreck, which was discovered off the coast of Indonesia in 2018. The familiar slogan, written in its native language, has helped archaeologists uncover the history of the wreck, which is at the bottom of the Java Sea. They believe that the wooden hull of the vessel rotted away centuries ago, leaving only the ceramics and luxury goods that it once carried strewn across the seabed. It's the wording of the label that's helped experts to date the ceramics. It refers to the Chinese government district of Jianning Fu. The area's name was changed to Jianning Lu after the invasion of the Mongols in 1278, meaning the ceramics couldn't have been made later than that year. Other goods lost in the wreck include elephant tusks and containers full of sweet-smelling resin. This would have been an extremely expensive loss for somebody when it happened. We're heading back towards Jerusalem now to look at a stunning jewelry collection, one piece of which stands out above all the others. It's a 900-year-old earring and it was found in the ruins of what's thought to be a crusader tower in the town of Modin Maccabim Rouet. The tower stands on Titora Hill and is about 20 miles from Jerusalem. Rather than being discovered by a professional archaeologist, this earring was found in June 2017 by a team of 2,500 schoolchildren serving as summer volunteers with the Israeli Antiquities Authority. The part of the fortress that the earring was found in is thought to have been the kitchen, so it's easy to imagine a busy cook accidentally dropping their jewelry either into the food or behind a stove, only for it to remain trapped there for nine centuries. Totora Hill is known to have been settled by humans since at least 6,000 years ago, so there's no shortage of ancient artifacts to be found there by archaeologists, schoolchildren, or anybody else. Other pieces recovered by the children include bracelets, rings, and hairpins. The site is thought to have been first settled around 6,000 years ago, so there's probably more to find there if people dig deep enough. You never quite know what you're going to get when you buy a mystery box from an antique fair. Most of the time, you'll probably end up with a box of useless junk. But there are exceptions. When Greg Pack paid $5 at an antique sale in 2019, he ended up with far more than he bargained for. Upon opening his purchase, Greg found it was full of photographic glass plates. He knew a thing or two about photography, so he immediately realized they were very old, but he also realized they were potentially salvageable. By scanning the negatives and processing them through Photoshop, Greg discovered that he'd accidentally acquired someone's precious family memories. He took to social media for help identifying the owner, and over 129,000 shares later, he got an answer from someone who believed they recognized their great-great-grandfather in the pictures. Greg had always known the pictures were old, but it turns out they'd been hiding inside that box for more than a century. The images may not have cash value, but we're sure the family they've now been reunited with considers them to be priceless. The golden rhinoceros of Mapungubwe is not what it appears to be. It's certainly a figurine of a rhinoceros, but it's not golden. It's actually made of wood, with a thin layer of gold sheeting wrapped around it to make it look more valuable than it actually is. The artifact is thought to be around 1,000 years old, and is so-called because it was found in Mapungibwe National Park in 1932. The archaeologist responsible for the discovery noted that it seemed to be part of a small-scale royal burial. 
If so, that's a controversial finding. If the hillside site the rhino was found at was a royal grave, it implies the existence of an independent kingdom or fiefdom in this part of South Africa during the 11th century. That would be the oldest known example of a class-based society existing anywhere in the southern part of Africa that long ago, and contradicts the oft-told European narrative that South Africa was uncivilized before Dutch settlers arrived there in the 16th and 17th centuries. However, if there was a fiefdom here, there should be more direct evidence of it somewhere in the ground. Perhaps a further archaeological dig at that hillside would be a good place to start. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.